welcome to Free Media. I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. A jury found Hunter Biden guilty on three federal gun charges related to his firearm use while addicted to drugs. Over on CNN, analysts reacted to the verdict. Let's watch. Now, I will say one thing uh, that is very interesting here. While Donald Trump has not seemed sympathetic at all about Hunter Biden's addiction issues, he himself has come from a family that had addiction issues and has talked openly about it. So interesting there that uh, he has, one of the things we've talked about is how many Americans find this case to be sympathetic in some ways. Donald Trump himself does not seem to be one of them. How can we make it about Donald Trump? It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's just without fail. I mean, I think the the problem here is that the the people who are not expressing sympathy for Hunter are not doing so because they don't have sympathy for addicts. It's because he has repeatedly refused to take responsibility for his behavior. And it's a key part of drug or alcohol recovery that you have to make amends for mistakes that you made while you were under the influence. And yet the Biden family has been obstinate about the fact that Hunter basically did nothing wrong. One of the jurors has actually spoken out since this guilty verdict came down, and they said that they had two members of their family who passed away due to drug addictions, and they felt sympathy for Hunter, but ultimately, at the end of the day, nobody is above the law, and this case was pretty, you know, cut and dry that he was pretty obviously yeah. addicted to drugs when he lied on this federal form. Look, it's pretty straightforward and obvious, I think, that he did break the law, um, and I don't think, you know, the, the son of the president, um, a powerful and well-connected figure um, should get some a special leniency that wouldn't be afforded to everyday Americans. Um, you know, we do, in fact, have very strict uh, drug and gun laws in certain parts of the country, sometimes opposite parts of the country. And they'll, they will, the authorities will go after you for violating them. So should there be special treatment for Hunter Biden? Of course not. And he, he did clearly break the law here. At the same time, I, I don't think this is a particularly weighty issue, certainly not in terms of public policy. I mean, the reasons we are interested in scrutinizing Hunter Biden's behavior has to do with the alleged influence peddling with the Chinese, with the Ukrainian energy company. Um, reporting, you know, we initially saw that, well, Joe Biden had no knowledge of this and wasn't involved at all. Uh, ended up looking much sketchier after it was clear that he had called in to a business dinner that Hunter Biden had, that he attended a dinner where one of Hunter Biden's associates was there. Now, I haven't seen nearly enough compelling evidence that Joe Biden was like a willing participant in this. It seems pretty clear Hunter Biden wanted to make him so or wanted to trade on his dad's name. That's what we really wanted investigated. You know, them going after him for filling out a form when he shouldn't have done it. You know, I. Like, I, I, as a libertarian, I want drugs to criminalize, and I certainly believe in gun rights. So do I, you know, I, he did break the law and should, I guess, has to be punished for it. I don't, you know, I, I'm not interested in, like, taking people's gun rights away. So I'm a, at least a little conflicted, and I think some libertarians are as well, if that makes sense. I do agree this is the least interesting part of Hunter Biden's alleged crimes. And actually, Joe Biden, later in the day after the guilty verdict, was participating in a gun control event, yeah. uh, which yeah. is interesting <laughs> timing. Show, yeah. Whoever scheduled that at the White House clearly doesn't have his best interests at heart. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, the thing that people want to know about is the connections between Hunter Biden's foreign business deals and who was then the vice president, his father. And unfortunately, in this case, this is sort of like the bare minimum to hold Hunter Biden accountable because of the plea deal that fell apart, right? They were supposed to, uh, well, the prosecution wanted and Hunter Biden's legal team wanted this deal to go through that saw him pleading guilty to um, a series of tax evasion charges in order for the federal gun charges to be dropped and him not to have to worry about it because those would of course come with potential prison time. When the judge saw the details of this plea agreement between the prosecution and Hunter Biden's legal team, they discovered that it had given him this blanket immunity for all sorts of financial related crimes. Pretty much anything related to his foreign business uh, dealings would have been off the table yeah, for future I, prosecution. Was wild. Unique it was in so all beyond the, the pale. World, yeah. So beyond the pale. And this judge said, What the heck? What this is has is like nothing I've ever seen. It's unprecedented. And then the deal fell apart. Um, she didn't even actually 
prohibit the deal, but apparently yeah. both sides were kind of confused as to what was actually in it. Well, Hunter Biden, um, I think, was only interested in it if, if it, it did had the immunity exactly. the other things. So now they're getting him for, what is it, tax evasion in California, yeah. and then he has this separate drug case that, or uh, drugs and, and firearm case that just went through. Uh, but in the meanwhile, the IRS whistleblowers who have said that they were stopped from investigating any potential yeah. threads that led to Joe Biden are like, th he's getting off on all of these things that are sort of like the least exceptional yeah. part of what he allegedly did. Right. And then you start to wonder, is the investigation, you know, not to sound like conspiratorial, but is the investigation being directed or focused toward the, uh, the, the issue that is the least important for public policy, that involves his father the least, and is more, you know, open and shut case, but also not, you know, a very big deal. I think he could theoretically face like 24, five years in prison, but the, if for a first offense, you know, leniency is expected, which, which he should receive. That'd be, it'd be crazy to get any significant amount of, um, of uh, time for this. You know, he, I, I am sympathetic to him. He's clearly an addict. Um, you know, I don't think drug problem, uh, people do, some of them abuse drugs and have problems with drugs. I don't think, you know, the criminal justice system is the right way to handle that. And, uh, th you know, there's a lot of interesting questions around it. But, um, but yeah, Joe Biden has said that he will not be pardoning Hunter. I think that would be probably the, the, just a devastating blow to his reelection if he part, like were to pardon his son immediately. Can you imagine? Yeah, if he does it, he'll wait until the end He's of his term until... or the end of his presidency. Yeah, <laughs> but I, whichever yeah, comes first. Whichever comes first, but I do think Hunter's gonna get, what, maybe like a month in, in jail mm -hmm. and then there's a $750,000 potential fine. Yeah. So they'll make the fine probably as high as possible to justify minimal jail time. Interestingly enough, uh, some of the evidence that was presented at the trial, of course, comes from the infamous Hunter Biden laptop itself, uh, which uh, you remember was said by all the mainstream media people, by intelligence officials, by Joe Biden himself to have been Russian misinformation. Um, now we have information from it actually being used in a trial. Uh, I think if there's anyone out there anywhere who still thinks like the Russians somehow planted this and it was not actually left at a computer repair store, the fact that it's being introduced as evidence at a trial should probably disabuse you of that notion if you hadn't realized that already. Oh, they still think it. I saw some wow. liberals on on MSNBC arguing that what was presented from the laptop that the FBI had was different than the hard drive that was distributed to the media, which uh, of course also has not been proven to be the case. Keep Russia gating. All right, we'll have more free media right after this.